So now we're moving on to the, um, the Viceroyalty of New Spain, which as we can see is large, huge, and it was the largest, most important Viceroyalty at that time of the Americas. It covered all the way from North America, where we're now, <laughs> Southwest, West, um, Mexico, Central America, part even of South America, the Caribbean territories or colonies, and the Philippines are part of this. And I'm pointing at the Philippines because I'll actually be discussing the Philippines in a minute. The capital is Mexico City. So I'm, I will be calling it New Spain. I won't be calling it Mexico because um, at times people will just say, oh, Mexico. Well, it's a lot bigger than just Mexico. The first piece that we will be discussing, um, and if any of you are going to, I'm not sure if it's on view right now. I, have actually, I've act, I actually saw it. It was up a year and a half ago. Um, so I actually got to see this. Um, it is a screen, and the word for screen would be biombo in Spanish. So I've written the translation next to it. It has two sides. Right now we're looking at the front and the front is the siege of Belgrade. And then when we flip it, we'll see the, a hunting scene. It's made by the circle of the Gonzalez family, and they were active in New Spain from the late 17th century to the 18th century. Um, and this piece dates roughly from um, 1697 to <coughs> 1701. There's actually, we're only looking at half of it. It's actually bigger. Um, half of it is in Mexico, half of it is in Brooklyn. The Brooklyn Museum, yes, they just acquired it recently. Maybe about two, three years ago. Um, they had a really great exhibit um, on colonial America's um, domestic spaces, interiors, and this was one of the pieces they had in. Um, so it is a, a biombo, right? It's a folding screen. Um, it's a biombo, what they would call, let me just show you a, a A close-up, it's got mother of pearl inlay, as you can see, it's quite beautiful, and that's called enconchado, and I thought I wrote it down somewhere so that you could see the spelling. Did I type it here? Yeah. Oh, there we go, yes. So enconchado, it's spelled here just in case. Um, it's got mother of pearl inlay, and we'll see several, actually a couple, at least one more piece. Like, oops, sorry, I went in the wrong direction. Um, it is, it's an interesting piece in that it's emulating a Japanese screen. And that's why I mentioned the Philippines. The Philippines are interesting because um, the Philippines will be a point of entry of Japanese luxury items that will be then imported into the mainland New Spain and at times Salud, um, distributed throughout the Americas, but then sent to Europe. And so at this time, there's a huge market and a desire for luxury goods coming from Japan. Isn't the battle scene a European battle scene, though? Yes, they're both European scenes. So it's a Japanese screen, so it's, European battle. It's not a Japanese screen, it's a Japanese inspired screen. Inspired screen. Yes. Right? So if you can't get it, you'll make something that looks like it. And so the Japanese style, right, this, this desire of, of luxury items became so popular that people began to emulate it. And so they're interested in screens and lacquer boxes. And if you look at the bottom, it looks like lacquer. And I'll, show, I'll keep showing more images. I pulled a lot of images. Um, the, web, the museum website, these are from the museum website, so they have these really beautiful high resolution details of the screen. That would be really fun um, so for you to... This is made in Mexico. This is a, Me sorry, this is an American piece. Actually, it was made in, technically in Mexico um, for an American audience. It was actually commissioned by 
the New Spain Viceroy. So I think this will answer some of your questions. And it was meant to be displayed in the Viceregal Palace in Mexico City. within the Viceregal Palace, the Viceroy's home in Mexico City. You know, the Japanese influence, and I'm, I'm struggling off all my stuff, but in Europe, we don't get that Japanese influence till the 1800s. I mean, it's, it's right around the time of the Japanese products coming in with the tissue paper that has the Japanese prints, and then there's the whole Japanese thing Thing that happens in France, but that's 200 years later. Well, yes and no. So the way we've learned art history is very much when we learn modern art history, it's from a French perspective. Yes. So we don't hear about Spain <laughs> having that influence and interest much earlier. much, much earlier. I mean, it's probably stronger in the Americas than it was in Spain, but if you go to Spanish museums, you will find um, items like this um, being displayed that were part of um, royal or some kind of high-ranking um, officer collection. That was either when they moved back or they would send it back as gifts. Um, and so that's, that's kind of the biases in which how we learn art history. It is, but I thought it was connected historically to the opening up of the Japanese court. Yes, and that's when we see a, a, a large influx, oh, okay. right? And, and this connects to Spain specifically because it's coming via the Philippines, right? And the Philippines is owned, it's a colony of Spain at that time. So we're seeing a smaller market because it's just staying within the colonies and Spain rather than traveling larger throughout Europe. I want to show you a picture of it. Um, actually open because when you see it flat it kind of doesn't really make much sense of what it is but this is what it would look like um, once you actually open and like I said we're only looking at a, a portion of it it's not the, the full um, screen it's quite beautiful um, it's very delicate here it kind of looks very saturated I just pulled these off of someone's Flickr account Flickr is amazing right um, <laughs> But, um, so they look really saturated. Um, if you look at it, but the previous ones we looked at are, are very delicate. It's almost uh, watercolor-esque. Um, the inlay, of course, luxury again, and it would have been really beautiful. At the time, there's no electricity, right? So we're thinking candlelight. The flickering candlelight would have caught off, bounced off really quite beautifully um, off of these. Um, I did say that it's, um, it was commissioned by the Viceroy, so it was meant to be displayed within his house. Um, the two sides are meant to, for completely different audiences. So that's actually uh, an important little bit. Um, the hunting, so this is the siege, so the siege of Belgrade um, would have been a European war scene that we're looking at, right? Um, a scene from the Great Turkish War um, where the Habsburgs um, gained power. Um, and so it would have been intentionally um, shown to um, people that were visiting him for political reasons. Um, it connects back to um, Spain's control and power um, and how he's there um, as an arm of Spain to continue um, passing on and um, being a source of power. So it is a piece of propaganda, to use your term. Let me see if I'm forgetting anything. Um, So it would be dividing a space, and that, that's, where I was, that's why I was talking about the two sides. So one side would have been the political side, right? And so if you're visiting him, you're one of his officers, or you're another politician, aristocrat, that's the side you would see. He wants you to be reminded of Spain's power, basically, right? The other side, the hunting scene, 
Isn't that beautiful? That hunting scene. So the hunting scene, who do you think that, that side might have been intended for? His wife. His wife. You were right. His wife and her friends. So we have that, that violent macho power part. And even though it is a hunting scene, it's, it's very idyllic, very almost pastoral, right? It's very beautiful. And would that be a scene that would be more from the American versus the European battle on the other side, or is it kind of? I think there it's, the scenes per se are very European inspired. They're inspired by European prints. Um, we could just say it's a European object, and if we didn't really know the whole Asia influence, we would just probably totally believe it. So the flowers, there's beautiful floral swags and lion heads, very European at the time, romantic, beautiful, light, feminine, I guess we could use that term. I try avoiding it, but. Would it be a mistake to make any link to something like the Lindbergh brothers and the, and the May scene where everyone is, is out in the country but gorgeous and beautiful? I wouldn't say no, 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 I mean there's so many, at the time um, it would have probably, it would have probably made sense or something or some, something influenced by that at some point, right? Like the political right. propaganda and then like the domestic beautiful what I want my wife and her friends to see side of me. <laughs> um, it's a piece that um, shows this trans-Pacific exchange, right? We're seeing this exchange of ideas, and that's something that I think is really important in this piece. Um, and we're seeing their take on Japan, right? It's not a, it's not a Japanese piece. It is made in America. Um, but it's what they think of Japanese luxury items. Now, is it, you said it was not complete? Is it missing a couple? Yeah, it's missing. So it's, I think it's t six more. Either six or four more that are missing. Those are in Mexico. It is just gorgeous. It's beautiful. Yeah. You know, somebody, it's amazing that we don't know these countries. It's in Brooklyn. So this one you can actually, I'm not sure, I, like I said, I'm not sure if it's on display right now, um, but Brooklyn owns it. Um, so it was just in their behind the doors, closed doors exhibit on domestic interiors. Yes. I've been wondering that too. Um, why a hunting scene for your wife? Um, it's not a gory hunting scene though. It, it seems more pastoral than an actual um, kill. Um, I think I have. Well, um, it could be in some there we go. Versus, yeah. Oh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was a better, I downloaded this one from the website. I'm sorry, it's pixelated. Yeah, it's, well, royals would hunt for sport. Right? It was something for fun, it, so it's not considered kind of violent, even though we now do. What does it make kind of that Latin sense of machismo as well among the men? Uh, I'm not sure if hunting and, mach and the, that man empowerment is just a Latin thing. Well, no, but, <laughs> no, I don't think it's just a Latin thing, but it, it comes up. It could. I mean, are you, are you getting a, mach, a, a macho vibe out of it? Because I'm not, but I could be totally wrong. I don't think so. Not macho. Through the imagery, through the theme, yeah. but not the through the imagery. Yeah. Because yeah. it's more about aristocracy. It is. It's about the sport. Oh, yeah. And 
And then we don't have to hunt for food, we can hunt for pleasure. It's for fun, yes. Even when you look at royal portraits and they're hunting, it's not about the gore and the butching, it's about I have this spare time and I can do this for fun with my beautiful dogs. Yes. Yes. It is a sign, very much a sign. Yeah, very much a sign of privilege. Well, yes. This is totally not in the middle of Latin America, Downton Abbey. But have you, have you watched? I mean, the big hunts are the aristocracy, and they all have <coughs> horses and their gorgeous decorated clothing. Mm -hmm. The women can stand in the blind and watch, or they can, I mean, and they're all dressed up too. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if women would have attended these, but it does seem very aristocratic and yeah. very much. indications that make this feel more part of the new world, like are they hunting jaguars or are like <laughs> well, this plants or, or is it pretty much Eurocentric, this is made in a... This is, it's very Eurocentric, I mean they've, they've, they've just transplanted themselves to the Americas, so they're still connecting themselves very much with Europe. Um, I forgot to mention, I just looked down at my sheet, this specific scene is inspired by a tapestry that was owned by the Medici family. Italy. <laughs> so a lot of these patrons and artists, they're not indigenous Americans. They are Europeans who have now been plopped down here. At this here. point, at this point in history. So there's in, still very much a European audience, I guess. At this point in history, in order to hold a high ranking position, you have to be a European import. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it's early on, there weren't many people being born there yet. But there's also a big distinction between European descent, even if you're 100% of European lineage, you're still not at the same level as somebody who's just arrived from Europe. So there's a distinction between um, what they call uh, a Creole and a Spaniard. And it doesn't matter if both your parents are European aristocrats, if you were born in the Americas, you already, there are a couple of things that you already don't necessarily qualify for. Whereas if you were European, you would. Ship the woman off to Spain <laughs> and have the baby out there. <laughs> I'm not sure you'd want to be on a boat pregnant because you have no idea if you're even going to make it. And so we have this single piece intended for different audiences um, on two different sides, right? Do you know what tapestry it was that the Medici? I just know it's a, it was a Medici-owned tapestry. I don't know which specific one. But um, I've given you um, the book reference, and that might, the, on the extended exhibit cat uh, essay on the piece, they might actually, I'm assuming they'll, they'll pinpoint exactly which. Tapestry, they probably. Okay. And that's a really, um, if you're interested in, in colonial art, that was a, actually a really good, I'm not trying to get, <laughs> push Brooklyn, but it was a really good exhibit that they had. And the catalog would be an, a, just a nice item to acquire. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm book crazy, mm -hmm. so. Which now I have to stop myself because every time I move, it means I have to carry um, that book, uh, my books. Actually, one thing that I didn't mention, which is a kind of a cool little or interesting little tidbit, is that um, the, um, the viceroy married an indigenous woman of royal lineage. So his wife traces her lineage back to Montezuma. And that's just throwing in there, um, just kind of a little interesting little factoid, I guess. So remember how I had said if you were of royal lineage, you, you had a higher standing in, um, within society. <laughs> so would that maybe not be a love marriage, but that's a way for him to, to fuse those indigenous people to him? Probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Moctezuma. Moctezuma. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how we should try to say it because you know it's been Americanized as Montezuma, but Montezuma. We Mont Montezuma. So she would have been given the access to those benefits, even though she wasn't from Europe. 
No, yes, but she was a royal yeah. in the Americas, right. and she was given, I guess, proper treatment okay. up to a certain level. So on one hand, you kind of recognize the royalty and the specialness, but on the other hand, it's like, no, you and your little culture and your civilization, now, you know, we're, we're taking Yeah, it. and it's, it's contradictory, it's confusing, yes. and wait till we reach the modern period and start talking about Diego Rivera. It's That's even... Yeah. So there's no consistency to it. It's just like there's no consistency. There's negotiation. There's at some points there's a little bit of negotiation. At other times there's a lot of abuse going on. So. But just to just to add to that, I mean, Europeans recognize for Mesoamerican and the Andes the hierarchy of society. Yeah. So they they know what royalty is. They know what nobility is. Yeah. and ancient societies have those too. Yes. So they recognize. Yeah, they saw these parallels and they acknowledged them. Yeah. So don't you think that that would also function as a, a method of control for the Europeans and the Americas? I think to incorporate those ideas of aristocracy, which were familiar yeah. to the indigenous population. Yes, I think so. Yeah. And any other next piece? Yeah. 